Archbishop Joseph Kurtz, the Archbishop of Louisville, and I'm delighted to be able to welcome you to the 43rd convention of the National Association of Pastoral Musicians. We are so delighted here in Louisville to welcome you. We know we're doing it virtually. And I believe it was just nine years ago, I remember in 2011, when so many of you came to Louisville, and I hope those of you who came remember the hospitality and the joy that was in our hearts as we welcomed you. In a very special way, even though this is uh, virtual, because of the pandemic, uh, I hope in a special way it still is a very enriching convention for you. I was reading about your mission and the mission of being able to inspire through uh, sacred liturgy, through sacred music, to be able to uplift people. I think of the many ways in which the beauty of our faith is expressed, certainly our theology, our architecture, but perhaps nowhere as clearly as the tradition of beautiful liturgical music. You not only inspire through your sacred ministries, but you also invite us to participate even more deeply in the work of our church. And most especially as we are uh, starting to come together again for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, uh, your role as ministers will be so great. I hope that this is an occasion in which you are appreciated for the great work that you do and inspired to continue that wonderful work. I understand your theme will be a theme of baptism, of living waters, and so I hope that the, the sessions that you participate on are, are enriching to you. Those of you who are presenters, I pray that they go well. But most especially, as you come together and perhaps have a little fun, I know you're known also to enjoy each other's company, that you will be inspired to renew what is so important today, perhaps more important than ever before, to be able to show the dignity of each person baptized in Christ Jesus, the dignity that comes from our community of coming together, and to be inspired by the sacred music that is part of our heritage. Welcome again to the 43rd convention of the National Association of Pastoral Musicians. Uh, enjoy and know of my prayers and support for you.
I'm Jeremy Helms, Chair of the Board of Directors for the National Association of Pastoral Musicians. It is my pleasure to announce that our 2020 annual convention is now open. I'm Steve Patronak, the President and CEO of NPM, and I welcome you to the 43rd annual NPM convention and the very first all virtual convention. I am extremely grateful for this historic gathering. My, how the world has changed over these past few months. In the embrace of a worldwide pandemic, we've lost more than 400,000 lives across the globe. Couple that with weeks of nationwide protests as people demand real change and equality for all as a result of the brutal deaths of Ahmaud Arbery, Louisville's own Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. Seemingly every facet of our lives has been altered and the heartache our world has experienced cannot be measured. For pastoral musicians, our world has also been rocked. Some of us have lost our jobs as a result of the pandemic while we all await the emergence of a new normal. Many questions remain. Just what will our worship ultimately look like? When will our choirs come back together? When will our assembly song be restored? We truly need our faith during these frightening times. The central theme of our convention this week is baptism built around the story of the Ethiopian eunuch from chapter eight of the book of Acts. Tell me, brothers and sisters, what's the condition of our own baptismal garment? Is it time to pull it out of our closet, wear it boldly, and get it dirty? Let this time of gathering together refuel us refill our hearts so we can become more effective music ministers in our work of ministry. Now, it wouldn't be right to gather together at an NPM convention, even virtually, without recognizing from where we have gathered. This year, we welcome pastoral musicians from outside our borders, from Canada, the United Kingdom, Ireland, and Australia. We welcome those from around the United States, anyone from Hawaii and Alaska, the Northwest, the Southwest, Southeast, Northeast, the Midwest, and all of you from the great state of Kentucky and the beautiful city of Louisville. We also welcome our first time participants of an NVM convention, those younger than age 30, and finally, those ordained priests and deacons who are spending the week with us. We're so grateful for everyone's participation here. We are truly one NPM this week. Recently, in response to NPM members' experiences and concerns, the NPM Board of Directors established an important new task force for cultural diversity, and the work of building it continues at our convention this week. Here to share about the task force and our work together as an association is Valerie Lee Jeter, NPM board member and member of the task force. Thanks, Steve, and welcome everyone. The task force for cultural diversity will include NPM members and leaders representing a number of cultures. This task force will work closely with the NPM board identifying ways NPM leadership, staff, and members can recognize and begin our part in dismantling the personal, communal, and systematic racism 
that pervades our church and our world. In addition, the task force will assist with creating a national visit for cultural diversity within NPM. We are indebted to Dr. Kim Harris, M. Roger Holland, and Lene Gray, and the others yet to join for their commitment to this challenging and critical mission. As part of our convention, the task force has created a number of exciting and informative Black Lives Matter breakouts. Topics for these breakouts will address issues of racism within and beyond the church and our own NPM family. They will explore appropriate musical responses and ultimately open up the dialogue for what the future holds for our association. I've been a member of NPM for over 20 years, so I know firsthand how NPM has struggled to reflect the reality of our culturally diverse church. We all have a great deal to learn about the roots of systemic racism and how they play out in our church and world. In the words of St. Paul, now is the very acceptable time. And so, let us begin. Thanks, Valerie, for sharing these exciting developments. Even though we are not physically together in Louisville this week, we will still experience the wonderment of this amazing city and ever faithful local committee. This incredibly committed group of volunteers has shattered the creativity meter. Throughout these days, we will experience our local committee in many ways, in prayer events, shared announcements, different musical elements, and a mountain of influence behind the scenes. We owe a huge debt of gratitude for their service to NPM. While the virtual convention was not what they signed up for, with a Louisville slugger in hand, they stepped up to the plate and hit a grand slam. Thank you all again for your participation this week as we gather in the safest way possible. Have a great experience with this inaugural event. I would now like to introduce to you our Episcopal moderator, Bishop Mark Seitz from the Diocese of El Paso. Bishop Seitz will offer a welcome address to begin our convention. Please welcome Bishop Seitz. Called from living waters, yes, that is where we got our start, in the waters of baptism. That is where our journey as children of God began. Of course, science tells us that all life began in water, that the spark of life somehow took hold in a watery slurry. Maybe that is why we creatures are so attracted to water. Water provides a primordial experience Water is a place of beginnings, new beginnings, and this will be our focus in these days we will spend virtually together. In my short time with you, I would like to consider some of the implications of that immersion from water, which began our life as children of God, and how music, particularly song, accompanies and announces that new reality. There is certainly something about water. Perhaps people like me who live in the desert where it rains only nine inches in a year appreciate it even more. For us in El Paso, rain is a big deal. When the dark clouds gather on the horizon, we each whisper a little prayer that we might be among the fortunate few to squeeze out a few drops where we live. Have you ever noticed water makes music? It has a powerful, calming rhythm. Wind and wave sing a melodious song. Does the song ever cease? 
No. Not for as long as creation goes on, its melody will continue. The song continues, constant and uninterrupted through all of time. Song is deeply intertwined with the human experience. Hub Osterhaus expresses this well. Singing is discovered and invented. It is born at times when there is no other possible way for people to express themselves. At the grave, for example, when four or five people with untrained, clumsy voices sing words that are greater and smaller than their faith and their experience. The people of Judah, in the worst moment of their history, on March 16, 597 BC, saw their holy city looted, the temple destroyed, their elderly and their babies ruthlessly slain, and the survivors carried off to exile in Babylon. Among the few things they brought with them, they salvaged some of their musical instruments. Homeless, hopeless, they hung their harps on the poplar trees next to the river in Babylon, the mighty Euphrates and sat down to weep. The river moving swiftly below them blended its melody with their tears. In the midst of this tragic scene, even their captors were moved to pity. In an effort to raise their spirits, the Babylonians asked them to play a tune and to sing. The exiles gave the answer in that moment of despair that we might expect. How could they sing the songs of the Lord on alien soil? How could they possibly sing? And then, in an act that is as mysterious as it is deeply human, they put their sorrow to song. They pledged that they would never forget their home. We know their song as Psalm 137. Consider the African-American experience. An oppressed people, brutally torn from family and homeland and enslaved. How could they possibly sing? But they did sing, giving rise to a whole new genre of music that has deeply influenced the American experience. Interestingly, water and initiation often played a part in their spirituals. Wade into water, wade into water, children, wade into water. God's gonna trouble the water. Oh, see that band all dressed in red. God's gonna trouble the water. Looks like the people that Moses led. God's gonna trouble the water. Sing with me, wade in the water. Wade in the water, children, wade in the water. Oh, God's gonna trouble the water. Yes, God's gonna trouble the water. Oh, God's gonna trouble the water.
I am grateful to my seminary classmate, Father Ray East. Many songs have been written about the trials we are passing through now. A crisis will often move the artist who has no option but to express what is in his heart. A good friend of ours at NPM woke up one morning early in the pandemic with this song in his head. Shepherd and sheep, my God and I, to fresh green fields you led my steps in days gone by. You gave me rest by quiet springs and filled my soul with peace your loving presence brings. Oh, shelter me, oh, shelter me. We are grateful to Father Jan Michael Jonkus for his openness to the Spirit. There is no moment, no experience of our lives when song is not needed, when song does not help us to express our deepest thoughts and emotions and to guide us through. This time of pandemic has really turned our lives upside down Things that we saw as absolutely normal and essential, we have now placed into question. Dining out, visiting family, going to church, school, work, sports. Even within the church, we have found ourselves considering things that we would have scoffed at and not given a second thought to. Parking lot masses, drive up confessions, Wearing masks. I thought that church was the place where our masks were supposed to come off. Now I'm insisting upon them. This re-examining of priorities in our life isn't all bad. We may be able to recognize some things that we assumed were essential that clearly weren't. But hopefully, we will also recognize some things that are essential and we didn't give them enough respect. Questions have been raised about whether music and song should be stricken from the liturgy during a time of pandemic. One of those essentials is the art that you do. What are we taught in Sacrosanctum Concilium, the Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy? I suspect you have heard these words before. They are like music to my ears. The musical tradition of the universal church is a treasure of inestimable value, greater even than that of any other art. The main reason for this preeminence is that as sacred song united to words, it forms a necessary or integral part of the solemn liturgy. One essential function of music is that it brings what is within out. In water, we are transformed. As Jesus tells the Samaritan woman at the well, the water I shall give will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Through music, we announce that transformation, reveal it. Music allows us to communicate what is deep within our heart, our soul, and to express that which we have discovered together, welling up in harmony with one another. No music accomplishes this role more perfectly than that which employs the human voice. As we are reminded in the document of the U.S. Conference of Bishops, Sing to the Lord, 
of all the sounds of which human beings created in the image and likeness of God are capable, voice is the most privileged and fundamental. Musical instruments in the liturgy are best understood as an extension and support of the primary liturgical instrument, which is the human voice. Music ties us to the song of the water and of all creation. It reminds us of something deeper, something that marks more than a new moment in our life, but a new act of creation. It moves us beyond the superficial. It not only unites us with one another, it establishes union with all creation and with God. This process of bringing that internal encounter into the world is not just a nice entertainment. Music, especially song, begins the work that makes faith real, that takes a seed of grace, an intellectual concept, and adds water. This role of music ties us to a major theme of the teaching of Jesus. Faith is not just an idea, and it is not a show. That is the basis of Jesus' critique of the Pharisees. You remember, Jesus said of them, they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. St. James addresses this and sums it up in a simple phrase, faith without works is dead. This brings me back to the question of what the water, when joined with God's creative word, does in baptism. We could always recite the answer, we are made children of God, brothers and sisters with Jesus. But this answer can leave us short of the true meaning. It can seem very passive, as if to say, okay, I'm a son of Ted and Janet too. Now what? But to be a child of God means far more than that, and we have to dig a little bit to discover the true impact of what God is doing when we are incorporated into the divine family. One of the biggest problems in the church today is that many people still see faith as a private matter. They think of faith as something for their private prayer, if they have time, and on Sunday, if they have time. That notion of faith is dead. Faith must be expressed. It must be lived. What we do in church prepares us to go out. Ite misa est. You are sent. I have made the statement before that everything I learned about living my faith, I learned in Mass. It is at Mass that I learned that faith is not private. It only makes sense if it is done with others, with the body of Christ. It is there that Christ speaks to me over and over again, not only about the amazing communion I am invited to share with Him, but about the incredible communion I am invited to share with all the members of His body and with all creation. One communion is incomprehensible without the other. This connection between what happens inside and outside the walls is of the essence of a living faith. Music is that which moves me beyond my own personal confines where I would be tempted to hide, and it moves me beyond myself. Any racial discrimination is abhorrent to this holy communion to which Jesus invites us. Our faith should enlighten us to recognize and confront any kind of racial prejudice and white supremacy, that which has been referred to by Archbishop Chaput as the ugly original sin of our country, an illness never fully healed. 
we need to begin by looking honestly into ourselves, into our communities and our history. We need to repent of our failure to change systems that brutalize our brothers and sisters every day and have led to the deaths of many George Floyds, Amand Aubrey's, and Breonna Taylor's. We need to truly listen to our brothers and sisters of color and so open our hearts that their cries become our own and we can sing together. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome one day. Another threat to our communion and to the harmony of our song is the polarization we are facing. We have allowed ourselves to be split into ideological camps today, dividing the social justice pie into disconnected pieces. Our gospel message is stripped of its power when we allow it to be so reduced. It is natural that individuals will have an affinity and involvement more in one issue than another, but we need to avoid the tendency of some to attempt to set us against one another. If they would look more carefully, they would see that we don't fit into either camp. No political ideology can hold us. We don't know all the answers, but we know what Jesus is teaching us. And that is a good place to start. What we bring is a necessary corrective to the public debate. We allow Christ to show us the way to harmony, not by covering over or out shouting discordant notes, not by forcing all the singers into unison, but by listening and loving and seeking new harmonies that the Spirit reveals. Many of us are sad. We are depressed. We are angry. We are tired. We are scared. We see our hopes and dreams dying. We see people and institutions failing us. We see a mere minute invasive strand of DNA called a virus controlling us. It makes us ready to strike out in frustration. If we can't make the institution after our image of what it should be, it seems to us that it would be better to tear it down. And here, I have something to say to those of you who are professional pastoral musicians. I know you are terrified about the potential loss of your employment or your income. Who wouldn't be? My heart goes out to you. I agree with you that there are issues that need to be corrected in the church in terms of the low pay and the lack of stability of your employment. I don't in any way intend to downplay the importance of these issues. At the same time, I hope you can hear these words from me in the spirit with which they are offered. God is at work here in this moment. The Lord is not far from you in this time of suffering and uncertainty. You were given life in the water, united with the divine song. What you do is not just a job. It is an expression of God's creative work in you, through you. Draw close to Jesus now. One way or another, we have work to do. We have a song to sing. We have to find ways to unite the members of the church around that which marks us as members of the same family. Like the frail but graced family we are, we have to find a way to work out our differences, not by lashing out, but by loving out. We have been called from living waters 
The song that emerges will share one creed, but many expressions which add to the beauty and fullness of truth. Ultimately, we will come together in the one song of creation, sung together with a diversity of voices. Don't be timid about your art. Don't cave to those who would suggest that singing is just an extra at liturgy that can be set aside in challenging times. Do we need to find safer ways to sing in this time of pandemic? Absolutely. Do we need to sing? Our life and our faith would be unimaginable, impossible without it. So let us march forward, glorifying God and joining in the music of creation. Animo, take heart. There is no time that is not the right time for a song.